We are in a prison cell, some 30 prisoners. The door was unlocked, a new prisoner was pushed in. First, we did not recognize him. Then one exclaimed, but this is Captain Popescu, one of the worst torturers of the communist secret police, and now he was a prisoner with us together. And we asked him how he did arrive with us. And he said that he sat one day in his office, and the soldier on duty entered and said, outside is a boy with a pot of flowers for your wife. The captain wondered, said, let the boy enter. And uh, the boy entered and said, comrade captain, you are the one who have put in prison my father and my mother. Today is my mother's birthday. I had the habit every year on this day out of my little pocket money to buy her a pot of flowers. Because of you, I have no mother to rejoice today. But my mother is a Christian and has taught us, her children, to love our enemies and to reward evil with good. And as because of you, I have no mother to rejoice, I thought to rejoice the mother of your children. Please take this pot of flowers to your wife and tell her about my love and about the love of Christ. It was too much even for a communist torturer. Tears ran upon his cheek, he embraced the child, he has also been created in the image of God. He could not torture anymore, he could not beat anymore, he ended with us in prison. Uh, for Christians it was not difficult to forgive. We would find it very difficult not to forgive. Uh, I remember that the uh, pastor who has been terribly beaten has been thrown into our cells into our cell and we washed him a little bit and then when he came to himself I asked him could you say the prayer father forgive them because they don't know what they do and he told me I could not Jesus was innocent and therefore he could say like this my prayer must be father forgive me and them because we both don't know what we do I am also a sinner and knowing that I am also a sinner, as the communist is a sinner, we have to forgive each other and we have to be forgiven by God. And even some of the uh, non-Christians, even communists, could forgive. They are all, there is something Christian in every heart. St. Augustine says that the human heart is naturally Christian. Uh, everyone who is a communist or a non-Christian is outside of his real place. The Irish poet W.B. Yeats has said that uh, too much suffering makes a stone of the heart. I mean, have you found that your suffering has in fact impoverished you or has it made you feel? Uh, he is right that it makes, uh, that too much suffering makes a stone of the heart, but it ma can make a precious stone. Uh, diamond is nothing else than black coal under very high pressure. And suffering has made Christians, some of them, to be saints of whom we did not feel worthy to untie their shoelaces. I have known a Christian pastor, a Presbyterian. I have been with him some five years in prison. He suffered horribly. He had left seven children behind and his wife and his ch seven children have been deported. In five years of prison he never committed a sin. We all the others were so afraid, we said, if a Christian must be like him, nobody can enter in heaven. After five years, he had for a minute an explosion of anger. Then we all embraced him and said, how good that you have also a sin. You are giving us a hope. Some Christians have become pearls under the suffering of the underground church. We have had a girl who uh, belonged to the underground church and had to be arrested. And out of a refinement of cruelty, the secret police delayed her arrest until the day of her marriage. And when she was arrayed as a bride, they came to take her. And when she was handcuffed, she kissed the chains and said, I thank my heavenly bridegroom for this beautiful gift which he sent to me on the day of my marriage feast. When she came out after five years of prison, she had her teeth broken, her bones broken. She looked an old woman with wrinkles. But there was a halo around her head. Sufferings makes you to be a stone, sometimes a very precious stone.